Hello and welcome to another episode of Que Fasa Hialeah. Hi, my name is Dr. Tony Cruz. I'm the campus president here at the Hialeah campus. And today we're going to be focusing on our city government, the city of Hialeah, the city of progress. And, you know, we had to have a real special guest to kind of talk to us about the stuff about the city. So today joining us is the president of our city council. And he is Jesus Tundidor, and he is here with us. And he will talk to us about a lot of great things that I'm sure that all of you are waiting to hear. So first of all, welcome council member. How are you today? Dr. Cruz, I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you for doing this, for putting this together. Uh, it really is an honor to be able to share uh, uh, some of my experiences and what we're doing here in the city with, uh, with yourself, with your students. And again, a very prestigious uh, uh, organization institution like Miami-Dade College that we're fortunate enough to have here in Hialeah, the second largest city in Miami-Dade County. So again, we're very excited for this and thank you. Thank you for putting this together. Well, it is a pleasure to have you here. And you know, you are Mr. President uh, as well because you're president of the, of the council. So Mr. President, I want to start off by asking you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey that has taken you to this role now that you currently hold as the president of our city council. Yeah, great, great question, uh, Dr. Cruz. Well, uh, first and foremost, I'm, I'm Hialeah born and raised. Uh, I, uh, I went through through the school system here in Hialeah up until about uh, uh, high school. I went to uh, uh, Monsignor Edward Pace, mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I'm a product of our park system. I, I played in these streets. I played hide-and-go-seek. I rode bike. I, I know the city inside out, every single corner. Um, and, and again, it's, 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 it's an honor for me to be able to represent the community that, that I was born and raised in. Um, you know, my, my uh, background is actually in healthcare. I, I currently work for a, a Medicaid managed care plan in Florida. I oversee operations statewide. Um, but however, I did get my start in really everything at the legislature, right? I, uh, in my first real job uh, was actually working for a state senator that represented all of Hialeah. Uh, his name is Senator Rene Garcia. Uh, uh -huh. Senator Rene Garcia, again, he's a, he's a Hialeah product as well. He started in the city council. Um, and um, I was able to learn not just the constituent services side, but also um, the policy side, right, during uh -huh. session up in, in, in Tallahassee. And I was able to really focus in on health care. It's what, it's what he did, health policy. So that really created my, my path uh, into a career in health care that, that, that I have today. Um, right. So, yeah, so that was that was real big for me. Um, mm -hmm. um, after I got my master's, I got an MBA from FIU um, and uh, it's, a, it's an MBA specific, uh, uh, specifically in healthcare, healthcare administration. Mm -hmm. um, I started working in the hospital system over at, at Jackson. And um, I, however, I did have to let go of my job with with uh, with Senator Garcia. Um, I, I began my career in healthcare. I needed to do that for many reasons. Number one, uh, you know, sometimes public service, uh, uh, well, all the time, it doesn't pay good money, right? So, yeah, right. So I had to I had to jump into the private sector to start getting that experience. And I was starting a family, a young family. My wife and I had gotten married, and we were planning to buy a home and 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 have a have a have a baby, and and so all those things cost money, as you know. And sure. so, um, uh, however, I knew that I always wanted to serve my community in some sort of capacity. So. Simultaneously, um, I, I also served on the planning and zoning board in Hialeah, which uh, gave me a great foundation to understand um, um, the different types of infrastructure developments that, that, that occur in the city, what types of developments are needed to, uh, to attract a certain demographic and to retain them. Um, and so uh, after a couple of years after that, uh, while still hanging on to my job in healthcare, um, I decided to run for office. And right. um, and that was in 2019. Uh, I'll tell you, maybe it's a conversation for another day, but I could write three books on, on that campaign. And um, it yeah. was it was very, very difficult um, and uh, it required a lot of sacrifice. Um, and uh, but nevertheless, we made it and yeah. um, we won in 2019 uh, it, it was about maybe seven different candidates that were running in our seat. Um, we were victorious in the first round and then we had a runoff because in Hialeah, okay. If you don't have 50% plus one of the vote, then you have to go to a runoff. And at, in the runoff, we won with almost 60% of the vote. Um, and uh, after a year, it, it was actually very interesting because uh, I get elected, and then maybe a couple months later, COVID hit. So it was a pandemic that 
that um, no other elected official of our time has ever experienced. Um, uh, so, but we had to quickly adapt, right? Because the community needed help, the mm -hmm. government needed to continue to function. Um, and so after that year, after, after 2020, I was fortunate enough to be elected as a council president. And, um, and that's where I'm uh, currently at today. And, uh, and yeah, that's a little bit of, of my background and my history. And, uh, and again, just looking forward to continue making history here at Hialeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing all that. And, and we're, we're very happy to have you as our president of our city council and the, and the commitment that you have to the community. I know I see you out and about a lot in different places, all over the place, actually, and uh, representing and learning more about what's happening in the community. And, you know, I grew up in, in South Florida, in Miami, uh, moved away and, and, and came back just a couple of years ago. And I'll tell you that the, and you know, I have been astonished about all the great things that are happening in the city of Hialeah. The city of Hialeah is, uh, you know, light years away from where it was even 20 years ago. And uh, it keeps on progressing. It is living up to uh, its name. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to be, you know, have our campus here and be the leader of this campus because I get to interact with you and other council members. And, uh, and it really brings a lot of joy to me to see the happiness of our students, but also just in the community. As I walk around and I talk to people, um, they're very happy with what's happening here in Hialeah. So that has a lot to do with the leadership. And again, thank you for providing that leadership on a daily basis. Um, but you know, we know that a lot of great things are happening, right? And I know we could probably come up with a, a very long list of things that are happening in Hialeah. But you know, I have you here on the show today, and I just want to know, you know, give me a few things that maybe are near and dear to your heart, or things that you're, you know, spearheading, or maybe somebody else is, but you think it's really important to talk about mm -hmm. initiatives that are happening in the city of Hialeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, and and, and that's that's also amazing. You know, sometimes we. We, we just focus on on doing so much work that you know we don't have enough time to sit back and really look at everything that we've done and so so I, I do appreciate that question you know we're working on so many projects right now Hialeah is booming um, not just from a from a real estate perspective but 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 also from 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 a, a population perspective right and and uh, you know one example is we're starting to see an influx of younger demographics coming back to the city Hialeah right um and and one of my biggest jobs one of my main goals that i had from the very beginning when i was running was was exactly that right how is it that the city hialeah as a government can attract young professionals young families but most importantly retain them, right sure. and um and that's something that 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 i put a lot of thought into and so one of my main priorities that we're actually seeing today with with, with certain projects is um the development of housing and retail around mass transit, right? So we have, it, throughout the city, we have certain areas that we've designated as a transit-oriented development district, right? Known as the Todd District. And so the idea is to build multifamily uh, housing products, retail or mixed-use spaces mm -hmm. around the Metro Rail, right? Around yes. the Tri-Rail, right? And what this does is that it offers an alternative to these young professionals that are living and working in Brickell, right? We're giving them a housing alternative where they can come and pay maybe a third less in rent than what they're paying down south, right? And they're only a train right away from their job. So um, again, that's something that we've been really focusing on and we're seeing um, um, a lot of exciting development. For example, we approved a couple of weeks ago a um, uh, certain development on the Hialeah racetrack and casino, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and just a quick background on that, because I know there, there, there was a little, some misunderstanding, I guess. Um, number one, uh, the Hialeah racetrack lost its thoroughbred licensing many years ago. So if you're in the racing industry, in the racing business, you know that that's where, that's really the, where the majority of the funds, the money comes from, right? The thoroughbred racing. However, the law used to be that if you wanted to operate a casino, you needed to have a, a racing as well, some sort of racing. So Hialeah uh, Racetrack always had quarter horse racing. However, it, it, it never provided the, 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 um, uh, the ROI that was needed in order mm -hmm. to sustain that, right? So, right. so the, um, just recently, the legislature uh, passed what's called decoupling. So uh, what they did was they said that you can operate your casino and you no longer need the racing. So that's oh, what's that's going on right now at Hialeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's good. Yeah. So we're going to have the racing. I mean, we're going to have the casino. I'm sorry. We're going to keep what well, they, I'm sorry, because it's private, it's private property. 
they are sure. going to keep the 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 um, historical architecture. They're going to keep that current infrastructure. They're, they're going to keep the actual racetrack where they have the historic flamingos right in the, in mm -hmm. the center yes. of the racetrack, and they're going to try to build smartly and very carefully around all that historical property, right? So a couple of weeks ago, we approved um, uh, uh, housing units. Uh, about I think it's about 300 units. Remember, we're talking about over 220 acres of land. So uh, we're, uh, they're going to build uh, around 300 units uh, right next to the metro station. Because remember, the Hylia Racetrack has a metro stop. Mm -hmm. And then we, we also approved a charter school that's going to be focusing on veterinarian services. Um, so okay. again, very exciting stuff for that for that mm -hmm. property for that area of town. And then also in the future, that was just phase one. But in the future, we probably they probably have about maybe two other phases where they're going to start incorporating uh, a lot of commercial and retail space. So I think that's going to be huge for that area, right? We're going to have Definitely. new housing developments. We're going to have the entertainment district, the the restaurants, um, um, just just new inventory in general that's going to attract young professionals and then hopefully retain them. And so yes. again, that's just one area where we also have another area on the Southeast corridor uh, known as the Hialeah Market Station, right? That's where the tri is. Uh -huh. and, um, and we're seeing two big developments actually uh, uh, coming before the council in the next couple of weeks that are again, going to create that concept of a community around mass transit. So that to me is probably the, the, the my number one priority. Mm -hmm. How can we bring in new families, new professionals to City Hialeah, and to kind of you know pass, uh, grab the baton from the older generations and 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 live their lives the way that our parents and our grandparents did it here in the City of Hialeah. Mm -hmm. I also want to also highlight one thing that um, it, it was a big battle, but we were able to get it done. Um, historically, you know, Okeechobee has never had the best reputation, right? I mean, Okeechobee had a lot of motels, hotels, there was a lot of and pop, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I always wanted to do was, you know, how can we make this area better, right? How can we make it cleaner? You know, it's uh, it's it's one of the main arteries in the city yes. with, with the worst with the worst reputation. So one thing that we did as a council a couple months back, we um, we implemented new regulations on on the motel industry, right? And and again, we did that looking at data this wasn't something that we just thought of and said hey this is the law we're going to pass absolutely not right. we held a three-month surveillance uh with our police department right observing and and and, and, and surveilling certain or uh, the most problematic motels that we've had in the past and we try to identify ways on how we can better regulate them and provide better oversight from a city perspective and so again i think it was in may or in july or in july I, I forget exactly what it was, but but we passed a comprehensive ordinance that 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 pretty much um, speaks to oversight, more oversight, more surveillance on 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 the motel industry because of because of the uh, the historical crime that we've always seen there. So that was a big win for the city. That was a big win for the residents. And and again, at the end of the day, it's a big win for the businesses, right? Because if you have a bad business that there's constantly crime, that that police are constantly going every single week. It, it, it's going to be bad for you. It's going to be bad for your consumers. It's going to be bad for everyone. So at the end of the day, what we did was a victory for everyone, and, and that's something that we could be proud of. Well, I'm 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 happy to say that the city Hialeah passed the most um, strict ordinance regulating this type of industry, and we're the first in the city in first in the state to do so. Oh, that's great. Congratulations on that. I mean, I, I think that both you know creating that safety. But also the other things that you're talking about, creating a more robust place to live for young people, young families, people to stay here, right? Because we want people to stay in the city and thrive in the city. So all those initiatives seem to me to be very positive. And, and thank you for, for, for working on those and, and making sure that that happens and, and making our city uh, better every day. And Dr. Um, Cruz, and just and just so you, and then the, the the last piece, which we never really talked about, I don't know why, is that um, you know we, we have to figure out better ways on on attracting business, right? I mean, I mean, historically, Hialeah has always had the small mom and pop businesses, right. and that's great, right? That's great right. because that's the backbone of our community, backbone mm -hmm. of America. Um, however, you know, the new generations that are going into the workforce today are more equipped. Right with uh, education, a lot of these a lot of these young folks are are coming out of Miami Dade College. They're coming out of other different uh, higher education institutions that they're ready 
to, to put that education into work, right? Um, they want to utilize it to make sure that they can provide for their families, contribute to society. But if we don't have the jobs in our community that are tailored to that type of education, mm-hmm. then those kids are going to leave and they're going to go yep. somewhere else. And then maybe they might want to have a home closer to that job downtown or down south or whatever the case is or right. up north. So so we need to do our part. And we've been, we've been doing a great job in that. Um, however, uh, you, you know, when you approach an Amazon, when you approach a big business, a, a nationwide business, um, they start making certain requests, right? And they want to inquire about, well, how's mass transit? Right. How's traffic? How's housing? Um, w- what type of demographics live in your community? So those are those are all things that that again we need to first check the boxes on before we can go after the big businesses so they can invest here in the city of Hialeah. And definitely, those are those big businesses like any. Uh, major city, any city, in order to grow, you need that. You also need it from a tax base perspective. You then it, that they actually obviously provide those jobs that keep people in the area. Uh, but it, it it is it could give you know if we attracted those type of large national or international corporations to even have some kind of presence here in in this area and, and particularly in Hialeah, I think it would uh, be a very big asset you know to to everyone. But you're right. It's it's a team effort. There's a lot of things that go into that happening, um, and I think it would also give the the a very big boost to the city and its yeah. reputation. It's you know it, it's it's what people perceive it to be, right? And I think that based on our location, you, you know, it used to be that this used to be, you know people say north. Well, yeah, it's north. It's north of Cat. But now with you know as much stuff has grown in in north in uh, southern Broward. And this whole area is becoming very, basically, and we're very accessible. You know, Hialeah right. is a very accessible place. Uh, so you're you're you know very close to 75. You're close to the Palmetto. I mean, it makes it very accessible uh, to to a lot of different places. So I can't see why not, right? Why not have these large corporations uh, come and establish some type of significant presence here in Hialeah? So definitely something that we can, and that's something that I'm very uh, passionate about. And whatever I can do. Uh, you know, from our end here at this campus to maybe provide the certain programs that might attract the, you know, like the, be able to to equip and to educate individuals to be able to get into those corporations or or maybe those corporations are looking for a good partner to uh, continue do continuing education for and training for their employees. All those things are some things that uh, we can definitely help and I'm very passionate and very interested in doing as well. So yeah, so those are great things. Um, and so, and I know there are a lot more things, right? There's a lot more things that we can we can talk about. Um, but let's move to to kind of uh, you know how people get more involved in 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 city government and their community. And I know that you know there'll be students watching this, there'll be community members watching this, and kind of thinking, yeah, okay, Mr. President, Mr. Council, uh, President, you you you're you, yeah, you're doing great things, you know, and the government's doing their thing, and I'm doing my thing. But I, I think that as as citizens of this community, we need to be involved, and uh, it's it's very important for us to be involved in knowing what's happening and how can we help. So, how can students, say Miami Dade College students, and our community members get more involved in city government and what's going on? Sure. Listen, I think I think it, uh, it's it's very very important, and and I continue to stress this so much for everyone especially young folks right to get involved in the political process i mean look i i you know I'm, i just bought a home a couple of years ago um we're paying over four thousand dollars in taxes here in the city and, and 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 i'll tell you something yesterday wednesday we just passed our budget okay we just passed the city's budget it was over 360 million dollars in total and um and in that we also pass uh the millage rate right which is which, which it's, it's property taxes right I guarantee you that maybe only 2% of the population in Hialeah knows that we passed the budget last night and Mm -hmm. they wouldn't know if we made any changes to to the millage rate, if we made any changes to the water rates, if we made any changes to solid waste rates, right? Right. So so it's it's important to to, to really get involved at the local level. Um, I would say even more than at the national level. Right. Everyone, you know, everyone always focuses on the presidential races, maybe even the gubernatorial races. But but no one focuses on local elections where you're directly impacted by the decisions that we make. 
Sure. So, and, and, and I'll leave you with these numbers, right, real quick. We have about 245,000 people that live in the city of Hialeah. Right. 100,000, a little over 100,000 of them are registered to vote. Do you know, and, and I, want you, I want you to guess, right? Okay. How many people voted in my election in 2019? In 2019, so it's not a, a it's not a general election year, right? So that's number one. So the number's going to go down. So out of the hundred thousand that are that were um, that were registered, I'd say fifteen thousand voted. Right. Ten thousand voted. Okay. Right. You're close, and and you know you I'm pretty sure you have an understanding of this, uh, you know. But but the average person wouldn't know that. I've asked that question. I, I spoke at a school the other day. And someone said fifty thousand, and I said, "I wish, I wish fifty thousand yeah, people would." Yeah, that would be great, even in a general election. I think of any kind. <laughs> exactly. So, right. so you know, again, it's very, very important. Now, you know, how can folks get a, a, a involved? I mean, you know, get involved in in, in in campaigns, right? I mean, we have a big mayoral campaign, uh, a, a big uh, a council campaign uh, yes. as well. Election cycle this year. Mm -hmm. Elections are coming up now, November second. Um, I think sometimes that is the best way. Uh, to get involved because you start understanding the issues, right? And when you start understanding the issues and you start relating, you say, well, wait a minute, that 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 could happen to me or, or you know, my parents actually paid this much in, in, in water last month. And, and so I think it's very important to get involved in the political process, campaigns, but also, for example, you and I had conversations before, not too long ago, and we're going to look to, to, to work together in, in the near future on, yeah. on, on addressing the recycling issue that we have in Hialeah, right? Yeah. So Unfortunately, the city of Hialeah isn't currently processing recyclable material, right? And, right. and, and a big part of the problem is that um, uh, we found in recent studies that we have a high contamination rate um, in our recyclable material. So in other words, in the green can, right, that's used for, in the bin, that's used for recycling, we found um, debris, we found uh, mm -hmm. things that are not supposed to be in there, right? Yeah. And then a lot of the times we found that, okay, it's not just pure negligence or, or, or whatever you want to call it, but, but also we found that um, just folks aren't recycling correctly, correctly right? right. Uh, and we, we, we found uh, in the study, we found sometimes um, recyclable material inside plastic bags, right? A lot of older folks tend to do that, um, but you can't do that. You can't recycle that material anymore because it's inside that plastic bag. Right. Or sometimes I, I like to use the pizza carton example. You order a, a, a large pizza from, from Papa John's and, and, you know, you eat it and everything. And then you said, OK, well, I'm going to put this now in the recyclable bin. Uh, but but then you never cleaned it. Right. So it has grease and it has cheese and it has tomato sauce. And so now you can no longer recycle it. So because of that, um, we were getting charged a lot more. We were losing money on, on our recycling program because it wasn't being done correctly. So so, again, one of the ways that, uh, you know, Dr. Cruz, uh, you know, again, we're, we're talking about working together on this yes. is. Is, is, you know, partnering up with Miami-Dade College with your students and our uh, solid waste department, right, and, mm -hmm. and, and providing outreach to certain areas in our community that we've designated as high risk or high contamination rates and right. canvassing each area and, and, and providing just a brief summary of, uh, on educating them on how to properly recycle the material. And that's a way, Dr. Cruz, that Again, the community can work together, right? We're yes, working with, with with an organization such as yours, as Miami College. You you know, we're we're working with your students, working with yourself, with your staff. You're working with us, with elected officials, with staff, and together we're trying to aim for a better solution, for a better Hialeah, a cleaner Hialeah. And again, that's just one of many, many ways, many other ways that we can all work together. Um, and get involved in the political process and the government process and just in, I guess, in the clean process, right? Yeah, oh, definitely very important stuff. And, and we're, we're really looking forward to working with you in the city on, on the recycling campaign because, uh, you know, as we, you know, we are, uh, like you said, 245,000 residents, a lot of stuff is, you know, a lot of people consume a lot of stuff and, and there's a lot of stuff that needs to be recycled. And, and if we want to keep, our environment uh, in good in good in a good state. We need to be able to recycle and recycle uh, efficiently and correctly, so we can ma maximize that service. So, and, yeah. And sometimes, Dr. Cruz, I mean, I, you know, I, I love to do things strictly Hialeah because that's where that's who I represent. That's 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 where I live. That's where all of us live. You know, and and so, but but for example, I I, I get a call from uh, our chief bay officer from the county, which is Irena. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then, 
and, and she is, um, again, she is, uh, they call her the water princess. She's, uh, she's all about saving Biscayne Bay and, and very, very knowledgeable with that in that, in that, in that aspect. And, and I toured, um, uh, you know, one of our canals called C7 that runs through Hialeah. And it's actually uh, controlled and, and, and managed by the South Florida Water Management District. And, and I was just told that C7, that canal, is one of the most dirtiest canals that we have in Miami-Dade County. Wow. Right. And so uh, when I toured this canal, I saw a lot of debris floating. Uh, there's a lot of stuff underwater that you can't see. But then most importantly, um, there's a lot of chemicals, right, that are being mm-hmm. dumped into our canal system uh, that, again, you can't see from the surface. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's providing a lot of issues um, uh, down down at the end, which is where the bay's at. And we've had a, all these fish kills. We've had all these other problems going on with the with with, with, with the ocean environment. So uh, again, the county has reached out to us. We're not part, you know, we are part of the county, but we're not the county government. But they sure. reached out to us for our help to see how we can continue to spread that message on mm-hmm. the importance of keeping our canals clean, right? And so yeah. again, that's another way to get involved, not just, it won't impact Hialeah directly, but in the overarching goal, it, it, it does, right? And so that's when it we does. all come together and do our part. It does, and it, and it affects us all at the end, right? Because right, the, right. protecting the bay is, is something, even though we don't live by the bay, it's right. it's an important thing to to the entire, all, all Dade County residents. So yeah, definitely something that we, we can, that we need to look at. Um, so, you know, a lot of great stuff happening at the city. You're involved in a lot of things that are very impactful. Um, what words of wisdom would you give to our Miami-Dade College students, whether they be Hialeah or other students? It doesn't matter, but, you know, you're involved in all this stuff, and I know that you're also in the private sector, and obviously you have your job, and so what words of wisdom would you give them today? Yeah, you know, um, and actually, I was talking about this with my assistant a couple of weeks ago, um, but um, I'd probably say two things, right? Um, the first one is, um, if you're going to do something do it all the way, right? Um, if, if you really want to do something, make sure make sure it's what you really want to do. You don't want to waste time, right? That's the worst thing you could do in life. You know, tomorrow's never promised. Um, um, and so, so whatever you want to do, make mm-hmm. sure you do it all the way. And then that's number one. And then number two is um, don't be afraid to fail, mm-hmm. right? Um, sometimes, you know, that, that could be a big reason why we don't want to do certain things. Um, we're, we're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of what other people are going to say about us. Is someone going to make fun of us? Look, if that's something that you really, really want to do and you know you're going to do it all the way, have no fear and move forward. That was a big thing that happened with me um, in 2019. Again, there was a lot going on in my life. I had just gotten married. We bought a home. Um, that, you know, I was, I was running a plan, uh, operations for a plan statewide. Uh, but this was something that I really, really wanted to do and I did not let the fear get in the way. Um, you know, sacrifices had to be made. But again, that comes with really wanting something. And, um, and, and, and we were victorious. And so again, if you're going to do something, do it all the way and never let fear hold you back. Definitely great words of wisdom. I think that a lot of times that fear holds us back and, um, and people don't really achieve their fullest potential. So I think it's, it's you got to get out of that comfort zone, whatever that comfort zone is. We all have them, right? We all we, we grow up in certain place or we do certain things. We know certain people and uh, it gets real easy to just fall back and not really aspire to be what we think we want to be, you know, whatever that may be our goal. But sometimes other people hold us back or whatever the case may be. But you're right. It's like we, we got to get out of that comfort zone and really uh, try to, you know, don't worry about failing, you know, because I think most of the greatest either athletes, celebrities, uh, elected officials, leaders, uh, leaders of industry, all those people have had failures in their life, right? Yeah. But it's its not how many times they've failed, but how many times they've gotten up and they've that's continued. Right. And that's why they've gotten where they've gotten. Uh, even the greatest, I mean, you can read books, you know, there's books and so many books have been written about the greatest people that have ever lived on this, the face of this earth. And most of them have gone through some trial, trials and tribulations and some failures in order to ultimately reach that pinnacle of success. So Definitely great words of wisdom. And um, again, Mr. President, thank you for joining us today on Que Pasa Hialeah. Really appreciate the conversation we've had. We look forward, obviously, to interacting with you a lot more in the future as we work on different initiatives to make our city of progress continue to be the city of progress. So thank you for joining us today. And all of you watching, thank you for joining us here at Que Pasa Hialeah. And I look forward to seeing you next time.
Thank you.